<laughs> That's a different film. <laughs> um, so used to seeing you in hats, mate. <laughs> like, you know, you're wearing... You know that. <laughs> yeah. It was a witch hat. I mean, I had to do more of it. I don't know if I was better, um, mm. but I had to do you a lot won. of it. Um, I had to do a lot of it. I actually quite enjoyed it. Towards the end, I was like, oh, I could, I could do this. You did a lot of I steps. I could do some running. We did a lot you of steps. Lot like of my steps. step count was high <laughs> doing shooting. No, I, uh, yeah. A lot of running and lots of layers and, and in the rain and, and, and up like, and down hills. Yeah, and like on, those, on those uneven grounds. Those moors. You don't think are, about these things. Yeah, you don't think. And also, period sh footwear is yeah. not. Nearly, there was no... Many challenges. Many I challenges. Many what challenges. Amazing you made it through. <laughs> amazing that we're still here to piece. tell the tale. <laughs> I did keep one. I kept them, they um, gave me the mask, which was kind of cool. I kept uh, something from the set, yes. I kept a pink neckerchief that uh, Emily wears, I think, in one of the scenes, and I, I loved it. It was all it was beautiful silk, and I just, I kept it. I asked costume. I did ask, and I, I was allowed. <coughs> I didn't just steal it. Or, um, but yeah, I just kept that. Um, I don't think I kept anything from Sam. Did you just, not keep the just hat? Just the beautiful memory. Just the sweet, just sweet memories. Just the sweet memories. <laughs> um, did I keep the hat? Which one? The straw no, one? So didn't, you have, didn't you have a big top hat at some point? Did I make that up? Oh, no, that's, that's a different film. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I used to see you in hats, mate. <laughs> like, you know, you're wearing. You know that. <laughs> yeah. It was a witch hat. It was a witch hat, I remember. <laughs> the costumes were phenomenal. They were so it. good. They yeah. felt like clothes, which is which never happens. And Michael O'Connor, who was the costume designer, yeah, he's, he's it made sure that they remarkable. felt really lived in, so they felt like second skin. They didn't, they didn't feel like we were putting on a costume. And he just understands that period so well. He's so, I mean, he's an Oscar winner. We just got so lucky with him designing the clothes for this. He also makes co costumes that are very comfortable for actors. They wash them multiple times so they feel lived in. And, um, and yeah, so for me, with period dramas where I feel like they're like, don't get the costume dirty, everybody step away from the actor. You feel that as an actor. And what we wanted is to everybody feel, like to forget they're wearing these costumes and it's just what they wear. So that's kind of what we're going for. You listen to the Macarena every morning. Yeah, Macarena steps. <laughs> steps. <laughs> Spice um, Girls. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm from a quite a musical family, so for me, music's so important when I'm writing and when I'm thinking about what the, I want the scene to be. I listen to music. Oh, I listen to music all the time, <clears throat> and I had an Emily playlist, so I had a lot of uh, um, music that, in, that it reminded me of that world and that universe, and um, I listened to the, actually listened to the Jane Eyre soundtrack, I think, by Dario Marinelli, um, the 2011 film, I think. Mm which I love, <clears throat> and that's a really atmospheric, kind of discordant um, soundtrack that I really love and felt really potent. And, uh, and so, yeah, I just tried to create a whole and listen to a lot of Chopin and everything because I knew Francis loved Chopin and was really inspired by his music as well. So I, I, I loved, yeah, I, I had a whole Emily playlist. Abel was someone who I knew we needed something very muscular and something very emotional and delicate for some bit. So it was a really big ask for the composer. And um, I've always been a fan of his work. And so we just sent him a cut of the film as late as we could, so it was as good as we could. And he had had a job that he had just fallen through and he saw a cut of the film and he's kind of fell in love with the film. So we got very lucky. Um, and that relationship working with him on the score for this was so fun. I think the score is, 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 so, is so powerful in the, in the movie. Like right from that first, I mean the it's first, haunting. like the opening. It was like that, <coughs> yeah. the, it's it's very much a sort of character yeah. within the film. And which, the choral uh, work, the voices that yeah. they have, the the bass. The, there's a lot of it. Almost it's vibrates, doesn't it? Yeah. It's nice when you feel the music as it's just like a sensory thing, as opposed to just mm. you know in the background floating. You know, mm. floating in the background. It was. It feels like it feels like a real, like a tangible thing mm. almost. So I. I love and also, it. Francis does this really interesting thing in the film where. There was sort of, I think the original cut of the film came in at about four and a half hours. So they, they obviously they had to sort of edit stuff down. Yeah. And there were certain scenes where she sort of taken the dialogue out entirely and left mm. the score kind of to tell the story, which I think is yeah. so. Or taken the score out and just yeah. left breath. So that everything's really precise and mm. thought through, which I like. <laughs>